Welcome to the small coastal community of Indian Shores, one of the smallest beach communities in all of Tampa Bay. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if it's your first time. Today we begin on the Gulf of Mexico, actually right against the Gulf of Mexico out here on this beautiful beach. And look, I almost have the whole place to myself. There is only a few people out here that way and this way, way down there. But it's so awesome to start it out here on the beach. I wish the sun was out, but nothing's perfect. <laughs> There's a yoga class over my uh, my left shoulder, your, to your right there. But anyway, I am Tampa Jay. Thank you for watching. There's much ahead. Well, you guys are probably wondering what I'm doing out on the beach today. It's not the beach I came to see, really. It's what is across from the beach, or what was across from the beach. Welcome to one of Florida's most iconic lost tourist attractions, the former site of Tiki Gardens. Now, a public beach access parking lot across from the beach we were just on. Actually, I parked right behind this wall. And this sign is the only evidence and acknowledgement that Tiki Gardens was once here on this property, now owned by Pinellas County. According to this book I have with me, Trader Frank and Joe Byers developed four acres into Tiki Gardens in 1962. And by 1969, the gardens with a South Pacific theme have been expanded to 12 acres and included several gift shops, monkeys, and birds, and a restaurant called Trader Frank's. There is nothing left out here but a couple of parking spots and a public restroom. And of course, you gotta have your pay stations. In 1986, Frank and Joe sold their Tiki Gardens to some foreign developers who planned on building a hotel here, but it took them four years to realize they weren't going to do so. And in 1990, they sold this land to the county, Pinellas County. Walking all around this property to see if I could find any evidence of the former Tiki Gardens, I read online that the only evidence you can really kind of see are the canals that were dredged which are intertwined with this parking lot. And they're all grown up, as you can see, all the mangroves and the, and the trees and the palms surrounding everything. There's a lot of growth on this 12 acres. But it is said that there are a couple of indigenous, non-indigenous palm trees that still exist out here. Okay, so I crawled back inside of this brush. I literally crawled underneath a bunch of trees, but check this out. It's an old seawall. Now, I don't know for sure if this was here, but judging by looking by the age, I'm guessing the seawall, the sea rock, was here during Tiki Gardens. Would love to find some more evidence to confirm that, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say yes. It, it was probably here just by, <laughs> just by the structure of it. It looks cool. Kind of looks tiki. Looks like you'd see it on the bank. Of a lagoon here but yeah there's I'm like wow there's not much to move around and it's raining but cool huh check it out having fun back here way back behind these palm meadows beyond this first palm tree that second palm tree I believe would be considered non-indigenous the trunk is a different color and it towers above this palm tree and I'm gonna have to walk back so you can see and there she is sticking out a lot taller than the other ones, right? Sticking way out of that mess there, that jungle. I'm just guessing, I don't know, but that could be one of the non-indigenous palm trees that was planted during or spawned from the time of Tiki Gardens. There you go, that's, that's it folks. Nothing here whatsoever, totally different than it was back through the 60s, 70s, and 80s. It keeps raining out there. I thought I'd come in here and talk a little bit about the history in a dry environment. This first photo I'm gonna show you, actually this first photo, is of Joe and Frank, the owners and founders of Tiki Gardens, and they were here each and every night. The first night was March 14th, 1964, the day they opened Tiki Gardens, 
and I believe it closed in the late 1985, early 1986. Now, Tiki was a huge craze back in the 1950s and 60s. America loved Tiki, and this tourist attraction was one of the most popular roadside attractions in all of Florida pre-Disney. As we know, Magic Kingdom opened in 1971, and Tiki the craze of tiki started to fade away. It wasn't so much of a trend anymore. And that's part of the reason why um, the park closed in the mid 80s. Uh, Joe and Frank were very elderly at that point. Actually, I think they passed away not too long after that. I, I believe Joe passed away first and then 14 months later, Frank passed away. And Frank and Joe actually met in Tampa they were, I think they were from there, but that is definitely where they met, I read that. And they moved out to Indian Rocks Beach, which is, I mean, a mile away. You have Indian Rocks, and then you have Indian Shores. And they open a tourist attraction, a, a beach gift shop called the Signal House. And tragically, it burnt down. Now this was prior to the opening of Tiki Gardens. And they suffered another tragic event prior to that. Their 16-year-old daughter passed away of cancer. So this couple had been through a lot. And they were fascinated with Tiki. Both of them never had been to Hawaii or to the Polynesians. But they just loved Tiki. And they loved tourism. And that is the Florida cash crop, as you know. We depend so much on tourism here. And Tiki Gardens started each evening with a torchlight, uh, a torchlight ceremony hosted and um, narrated, announced by Joe himself. And a lot of the employees would gather and light the torches and the festivities would start. And there's all kinds of things that were going on out here on these grounds. A lot of tiki things, a lot of tiki statues. And of course, people would dress up tiki style. Joe actually made a lot of the props and tiki stuff herself out here. A lot of the art was made by Joe. She was very talented. Can't win today. The rain turned down and then turned back up again. It's a good time though. Something about the rain at the beach. It's very soothing. I really enjoy it. Have you ever walked on the beach at night when it's raining? That is something I strongly recommend. That is one of my favorite things to do. I don't know why. No umbrella even, just get soaking wet, walk on the beach at night. It's gotta be a warm summer night though, you don't wanna get hypothermia, but yeah, check that out sometime. We'd always dreamed about the South Seas, Frank Byers told the St. Petersburg Times in 1978. So we researched it to see if there were any other attractions in the state with a Polynesian atmosphere. We found there were none. And if you're watching this from afar and you're wanting to come down to a nice white sand gulf beach that's less crowded and not as hectic as some of those commercial spots come on down to this beach access 250 an hour to park and as you can see there's plenty of parking spots right here on a saturday morning even stopped at the first little shopping plaza just north of the former tiki gardens bay mariner and check it out they have indian shores trading company dj's clam shack green iguana rentals and Hawaiian barbecue is what brought me here, but check it out, there's a rental spot over there. You can rent those little cars, some scooters, and some kayaks. And over here in this plaza, just to the left of Indian Shores Trading Company and Beachwear, there's a little Hawaiian barbecue spot. And look at that, parked right out front of their store, there's a little truck. Aloha to go, Hawaiian home cooking. Well, aloha. Aloha to go, and I'm gonna get some barbecue to go. So I just placed my order here, and I got the Big Kahuna Combo, Shoyo Chicken, Ono Teriyaki Beef, and Kahlua Pork, a little bit of sample there for my first time eating at this Aloha to go. Now there's two locations, there's one here, this is the original, and there's one in Seminole. And check out this little special menu here, pot stickers, fried dumplings, and spam masubi, that is pretty cool. And there's a lot of tiki things going on here, of course. Look at this guy down here in the corner. There's one there, there's a smaller tiki guy over here hiding. Look at him, there he is, right there. He's cool, and look, there's a Jaws book to entertain yourself 
while you're waiting for your food. That's pretty cool. And look, Hawaii's second spam cookbook. Have a nice day. Mahalo. Aloha. Look at this. Check it out. So I believe we have the pork, beef, and the chicken there at the end. And some macaroni salad and some coleslaw. And this looks amazing. I decided to come out front. They have some seats out front. I took it to go, but I'm gonna sit out here and eat it. It's, it's gonna be a lot easier than it is to eat, than it would be to eat in my car. And check it out, it's still raining. But, oh my gosh, I am so, man, it smells so good. Decisions, decisions. Do I start with the pork, the beef, or the chicken? Well, I'm gonna do a little bit of all three. See if I can, on my chopstick skills are not so good so far. Okay. Oh, I need some more chicken. Okay, there we go. I got pork, beef, and chicken. Oh my God. That is so good. I mean, it's a combination right there. I can't, so many flavors happening, but it's all good flavor. It's all good. And look, way down inside, under the meat, there's some rice, some white rice there for you. There is so much food, wow. I have about completed it, oh my gosh, am I stuffed. And I'd like to add that the little bits of pineapple inside of this little this little mash up here, it really sets it off, that little sweet burst of pineapple. Wow, was that good. That was so good, I strongly recommend that. Aloha to go right here at Indian Shores, also in Seminole. Florida, which is just right over there. But check those out. They are so good. It was the orange whip. This classic iconic code with the orange and vanilla that broke my neck. Actually, I hit my brakes, turned around at the sight of that and the sign that said Lulu's ice cream voted best on the beach. 19823 Gulf to Bay Boulevard. You can spot out Lulu's from the road from this ice cream truck. Check out this little ice cream truck. It's so cute, isn't it? Pink and white, it's small. I'm about to walk in there and get me some uh, orange whip. Classic old Florida orange whip. No! No! Don't worry, I have a backup plan. I don't know what's going on here, but there's another place to get some orange whip. Bingo, found it, orange and vanilla ice cream. Welcome to Yellow Banks Grove of Largo, Florida, just a stone's throw away of Indian Rocks Beach. Actually, the beach is right over the bridge, just a little ways away. Look at this busy bee, sucking on the orange there, that's cool. Well, hello, Sylvester, it's not whatever. It is definitely not whatever. This is so retro, check it out. That was a saying back in the 90s, I can guarantee you that's when this mural was painted. Now, this is awesome. This is what I call a classic old Florida roadside citrus stand. It's an attraction for sure. And check it out, they got the benches out here that match and the flags. And also there's a Canadian flag because on the sign out there, it says that they ship to Canada. They ship oranges to Canada. Speaking of oranges, the ice cream I'm about to have, have is made from fresh orange juice. Holy cow, look at this place. It's like straight out of the 1980s or something. Look, you can buy your bag, bags of oranges even. Look at the neon above the cooler. Isn't that awesome? Fruit sections, all natural, fresh orange juice. And look, they have orange juice in there. 100% pure Florida seal approval. And look behind here, orange juice. All kinds of orange juice. You have pints and gallons. I believe it's a half a gallon for $5.95 and a whole gallon for $10.95. To the right of the OJ. A beautiful display of orange blossom honey. Look at this. This is so cool. Like the, the light behind it kind of gives it a cool effect. But there's all kinds of shapes and sizes of bottles here of the orange blossom honey. And what's a Florida gift shop without seashells? Look at this. All kinds of varieties here. And some sand dollars. Look at that. Those are big too. Look. Some big ones. Oh, guy startled me. Hey there, buddy. How you doing? 
I just love this floor. It's so cool, so retro, isn't it? So awesome. And look at this. Look at all this grapefruit. I love grapefruit, especially with a little sugar on top. It really sets it off. And look, they have a, an example here, and it's wrapped. But that looks that looks really good. These old advertisements are lining this window. Check it out. He kind of looks like Dennis the Menace there, but his name on his hat it says Zipper. Florida Zipper Skin Tangerines are great. So cool. Here we are. I'm about to get my ice cream. You can get orange, 100% orange, vanilla, or mixed. I'm gonna get mixed. And look at this beauty. I went for the cup because I have the camera. It makes it a little easier to eat. But look at that. Made from fresh squeezed Florida oranges. The orange twist. Yummy. It's melting. It is Florida. It's gonna melt. Oh no, the drip. Oh, the first trip. And here we are back in the cart. There was no seating inside to eat the ice cream. It's raining outside. It's still raining, so here I am. About to take the first bite with you guys. I'm just gonna bite the top off there. No, I'll just do it like this. Got it. Oh man, that's so, so good. Oh man, the taste of orange. And that vanilla, it's so creamy. That is so good, I love an orange twist. Mmm. All done, all gone, that was so good. Check it out, Yellow Banks Grove, right here in West Largo, Florida, almost to Indian Rocks Beach. Just a hop, skip, and a jump away from the orange place, Sabala Plaza has a British shop. I broke my neck. I was like, hey, let's check that out. Maybe these guys would like to see them. Would you like to go inside this little British shop? Oh yeah, sweet deal, this looks awesome. London Pride. I'm gonna go right inside. Well, I have permission from the owner to film inside the store and there's a lot of things going on in here. Look at this, made in America with Scottish parts. <laughs> And of course you have Welsh and British and I'm sure there's an Irish shirt up there as well. So check it out. Not just food, but all kinds of knickknacks too as well. Look, you even got soccer memorabilia here. Soccer cups. You got Manchester, Arsenal. This is so cool. There's so much to see it here too. Canned drinks. $1.65. Look, UK soda. Now I've never seen some of these, but I mean, comment below if some of these spark your interest, but check it out. Look at that. That's a different... Oh, it's Fanta. <laughs> it just has a different logo, so I didn't notice it, but... Look, look check it out. Look, what's this one? Ben Shaw's Dandelion Burdock. Dandelion soda. I've never had that. Look at this. Scott's Porridge Oats. Original Scottish milled oats. That is so cool. And next to that, you have Al Alpen. I almost said Alpine. Look at this Cadbury spread. You got caramel spread, and you have the milk chocolate spread. I love some Cadbury. There's all kinds of Cadbury products in here as well. I had to step back a moment, but I just realized this whole section here is full of Easter candy. These are all Easter eggs. So many of them. It's almost Easter time, so they have the Cadbury eggs on display, and they, these are pretty big. Check them out. <laughs> Dairy milk, enchanted eggs. There's some Yorkies there, some Nestle Yorkies. And then there's some smaller ones over here. Look, there's a Mars Bars egg. That is awesome. In the center of the store, this was pointed out to me, it's a, it's a book, it's a limited edition book on the Queen's Jewels, the Crown Jewels, on display here right in the middle of the store. I think she said it's one of like only a thousand. Look, they even have a frozen food section. They've got some bangers in there, some banger rolls, some meat, some meat fries. How do you pronounce it? Meat britties. Four cheese and onion pasties. And of course sausage. There's a pork pot pie it looks like. Traditional pork pie. All kinds of stuff. Look over here. Baked goods. Ready to go. They're frozen but they're ready to go right into the oven. Look there's a Cornish pasty right from a Cornish hen. Pasty. Ooh, Kit Kat Chunky. I might get one of these. Check out the tea display. All kinds of different teas here. Keep calm and carry on. 
Ahmad tea, and up here you have PG tips and Yorkshire tea. Yorkshire gold there. And we've got our fair share of condiments sitting right here. Just down the aisle there. Look at this. Daddy's. Daddy's brown sauce. With, I don't know what Huntsman cheese is, but, is it, but it sounds awesome. It's a cool name for a cheese. Huntsman. Ford battered large cod fillets, English style. Captain? Is it Findus? Or Findus? Captain Findus sounds pretty cool. Probably Captain Fendis though. Okay. Now that was awesome. I got me some goodies here. I got more than I expected I was gonna get. I'll share those with you in just a second. But that was so cool going inside there. I've never seen a lot of that stuff before. I'm sure some of you over there in the UK are probably like, yeah, that ain't nothing. But to me it was something that was cool. It's cool to see that. And over here out front, I believe they have a British food bus. And we look at this, it's pretty popular too. The British food stop, fish and chips. Man, I'll have to come back when I'm uh, when I'm hungry. And I got all this snacks to eat later too. I'll show you my snacks in a second, but yeah, check it out. Right here in Largo. Not far from Clearwater and St. Petersburg. So I went with the Kit Kat Crunchy, the Maynard Bassett's Jelly Babies. I like jelly, uh, jelly candy, so I like gummy worms and gummy bears, so got me some jellies that I've never seen before. Some Walker's Potato Crisps. I know we call them chips here, over there. They call them crisps. It's a hard, it's hard for me to pronounce that too. Crisps, crisps. And I got the tomato ketchup flavor. Never had tomato flavored potato crisps before, so I wanted to get those. And I needed to wash everything down I just ate because I never, I never got a drink during my Big Kahuna and my, and my ice cream. Well, not a lot of people drink with ice cream, but you know what I'm saying. I went with an old Jamaica ginger beer. Well guys, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Give it a thumbs up, right there, there. Try not to spill my ginger beer, trying to make the thumbs up for you. Give it one of those right down there. I appreciate you always joining me here on this channel. And I appreciate it if it was your first time. I just appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed today's video of the Tiki Gardens, the food, the fun, the British shop. And look, people are piling in to this food truck. It's amazing. Ever since I've been here, people, there's been quite a crowd in front of that bus. I'll have to check that out sometime, some fish and chips. But anyways, I am Tampa J. And even though this one's over, there's gonna be another one. There's much ahead, my friends. Thanks for joining me here on this channel, always. It's really good. I enjoyed that. All right, guys. See you next time. There's much ahead. Bye-bye.